Hong Kong is at once both exactly what you'd expect and completely surprising. It's a compact, skyscraper-packed city infused with glamour and energy that also juts up against green open space that's dotted with hiking trails, swimming beaches, and subtropical flora. It's a juxtaposition that is wonderfully refreshing, especially after you've spent several days immersed in Hong Kong's hectic pace. Thanks to a wonderfully efficient transportation system, you can spend the morning shopping in the Causeway Bay neighborhood and noshing on dim sum in Shun Wan, before escaping to Big Wave Bay for an afternoon of surf and sun on a tree-lined beach. From Chinese New Year's Day to the Lantern Festival, dragon dances can be seen in many places in Hong Kong. They are believed to be a way to scare away evil spirits and bring good luck to people. Standing at 552 meters, Victoria Peak is the highest point on Hong Kong Island. It is also one of the most visited spots by tourists, and it's not hard to see why. Sweeping views of the metropolis, verdant woods and easy but spectacular walks are all reachable in just 8 minutes from Central via Hong Kong's 125-year-old, gravity-defying peak tram. Predictably, it's become a money-making circus with restaurants and two shopping malls, but there's still magic up here if you can get past that. The peak tram's upper terminus spits you out at the peak tower. Ascend to level 5 and you'll reach the Sky Terrace 428, so named because it stands at 428 meters above sea level. In Hong Kong terms, this is the top of the world and you'll be greeted with panoramic 360-degree views of Hong Kong's forest of skyscrapers, the harbor and Kowloon beyond. If you're not bothered about the highest point, and even if you are, it's worth seeking out the Lion's View Point Pavilion, a far more charming lookout with a cute Chinese pagoda and gate, bristling with lion statues. This is where elderly locals come to sit and enjoy the view. It's a signposted two-minute walk from the tram's upper terminus. Some 500 meters to the northwest of the upper terminus, up steep Mount Austin Road, is the site of the old governor's summer lodge, which was burned to the ground by Japanese soldiers during World War II. The beautiful gardens still remain, however, and have been refurbished with faux Victorian gazebos, sundials, benches and stone pillars. They are open to the public, it takes about 30 minutes to get up here and your reward is that it's blissfully peaceful. Head past the gardens and you'll find a second lookout point with island and sea views. For longer walks, including the 3.5 km morning trail, Pick up maps from the Hong Kong Visitor Center in the disused tram beside the Peak Tower or download the Enjoy Hiking Hong Kong app. The Big Buddha, also known as Chiantan Tan Buddha, is famed as the most iconic attraction of Lantau. Sitting next to the Po Lin Monastery, it is only a 10-minute walk away from Gong Ping Village. The majestic outdoor bronze Buddha statue sits solemnly atop the peak of Mount Mukyue. It is seated south and facing north towards Beijing, the capital of China. Divided into two parts, the statue's body is 26.4 meters tall and 34 meters in total measuring from the lotus throne and base. It was cast with 250 tons of bronze and built over 12 years. The statue was modeled after Siddhartha, who achieved enlightenment under the Bodhi tree. The imparting fearlessness Madra of the right hand indicates compassion to save all sentient beings from their sufferings, the fulfilling wishes Madra of the left hand resting on the lap, implies the vow to grant blessing and happiness to all. The ground floor under the Big Buddha is an entry-free mausoleum. The deceased local singer Anita Mui's ashes are interred at this mausoleum. Anita Mui is referred to as the daughter of Hong Kong by locals, who died at the age of 40 of cervical cancer. In addition, Above the ground floor are three floors known as the Hall of Universe, the Hall of Benevolent Merit, and the Hall of Remembrance. The Hall of Remembrance has kept the relic of the Gotama Buddha inside.
These three halls require an admission ticket or purchasing a combo ticket with a meal at Polin Monastery. Photos are not allowed inside the three halls. A true icon of Hong Kong, no visit is complete without a ride on the Star Ferry, while for residents the short harbor crossing between Central and Tsim Sha Shui restores a sense of HK's magic. National Geographic Traveler named it one of 50 places of a lifetime. It dates back to 1880 when the Morning Star Steamboat started a regular service from Kowloon to Petters Wharf on Hong Kong Island. Businessman Sir Paul Chotter, after whom Chotter Road and House are named, bought the boats and in 1898 the Star Ferry Company was established, with all ferries bearing the name Star. The Star Ferry operates two routes from Kowloon, respectively the Tsim Sha Shui Star Ferry Pier. The best known and most used route is from Kowloon Pier to Central Pier on Hong Kong Island. Another route offered is from Kowloon Pier to Wan Chai, also on Hong Kong Island. Star Ferry boats leave from Kowloon to Hong Kong Island daily between 6.30 a.m. and 11.30 p.m. to Central Pier. A ferry departs about every 10 minutes, so you never have to wait really long. During the week, the upper deck costs 2 Hong Kong dollars and 70 cents and the lower deck 2 Hong Kong dollars and 20 cents. On the weekend, the prices increase to 3 Hong Kong dollars and 70 cents and 3 Hong Kong dollars and 10 cents. The world-renowned cable car experience offers day tours and packages for your in-depth tour around Lantau, Hong Kong. The Ngong Ping Cable Car Ride connects Tung Chung with Ngong Ping and offers the serene panorama of Lantau, Hong Kong. Ngong Ping Terminal is right next to Ngong Ping Village, the best starting point to reach other Hong Kong attractions such as the Big Buddha, Polin Monastery, Taiyo Fishing Village, etc. Ngong Ping Village is the home to recreation, shopping, and four entertaining themed attractions loved by locals and tourists alike. The Ngong Ping 360 Cable Car Ride is famed as one of the world's most amazing cable car experiences. Get on standard cabin for a perfect start for your Hong Kong day tour. Overserve Lantau's nature and native ecology, and experience the other side of Hong Kong. Located on Hong Kong Island in the Wan Chai District, it is just one of two race courses located within the country and with a capacity of 55,000, it regularly attracts thousands of spectators from all over the world. The track is owned by the Hong Kong Jockey Club and has been in operation since 1845. It offers much more than just racing, with live music and themed evenings staged on a regular basis as well as an authentic dining experience. One of the things the greatest cities in the world have in common is awe-inspiring skylines and Hong Kong skyline has one of the best with the natural Victoria Peak and its spread of high rises. This sprawling urban jungle has a skyline dominated by skyscrapers that have been the backdrop of some of the coolest scenes in blockbuster movies. The skyline not only shows the city's development in modern history but also how well it blends with the natural environment. Hong Kong has about 300 buildings that are over 150 meters tall and about 60 buildings that are over 200 meters tall making it a city with one of the highest numbers of skyscrapers in the world. Known to locals as Ding Dings, Hong Kong's iconic trams have existed for over a century. These rickety, double-decker streetcars traverse northern Hong Kong Island, providing a unique and affordable way to experience the city. 
Hong Kong's first tramway, a single track running from Kennedy Town to Causeway Bay, opened in 1904. The first fleet of trams consisted of 26 single-decker vehicles. In those early days, the trams ran along the harbor front, but since then, multiple land reclamation projects have obscured the coastal views initially enjoyed by tram riders. The fast and convenient trams revolutionized the way Hong Kongers got around. In 1912, double-decker vehicles were introduced in response to strong demand. Following a brief decline during the Japanese occupation, which ended in 1945, the tram became more popular than ever, and tram services boomed. Within a year, the fleet was expanded from 40 streetcars to 63. In 1949, gates and turnstiles were installed in the trams, resolving the persistent problem of fear dodgers. The tram remains a cheap and popular mode of transportation in Hong Kong to this day. The Nanlian Garden is a beautiful and serene space literally in the middle of the concrete jungle of Hong Kong. Not precisely around the corner but easily accessible with the MTR, the Diamond Hill Station is a five-minute walk from the gardens. Most people come for the striking and quite photogenic Chinese pavilion with the surrounding pond and brightly contrasting red bridge, stunning on its own right, but do take time to admire the many other features you will find in this little breath of fresh air. Not exactly an ancient traditional garden, this is a relatively new garden, built in 2006 and managed by the Chi Lin Nunnery which is located across the street. But it is a typical traditional Chinese garden built in the classical Tang Dynasty style with all four elements of a classical Chinese garden namely rocks, water, plants and architecture. And as in traditional Chinese gardens, all elements are carefully arranged to create a perfect balance with nature and the environment. From the entrance of the garden, you follow a path that circles Nan Lian in an easy-to-follow one-way loop passing through all the main highlights and views of the garden. Lily ponds, cascades, galleries, pavilions, terraces. Rock clusters and intricately manicured bonsai trees are placed harmonically all along the path. Everything is placed along the path so that every step you take, presents a different world as you walk along, and every world presented will touch your soul in different ways. The galleries and structures are built with original large timbers in line with the Tang style and are carefully integrated with the garden's natural scenery. Getting an aerial view of a city is something else, right? If you're in Hong Kong and hope to catch the best view of the glittering city of Hong Kong, we know just the place for you. Sky 100 Hong Kong is the highest indoor observation deck in the city, located 393 meters above sea level on the 100th floor of the International Commerce Center in Kowloon, Hong Kong. On a good day, you can see all along Hong Kong Island from Quarry Bay to Causeway Bay to Wan Chai to Admiralty to Central to Shung Wan and to Kennedy Town. Not to mention, the views are simply breathtaking. Located right next to Victoria Harbor, Sim Sha Shui offers some of the best vantage points for Hong Kong's dramatic skyline. Hop on a short ferry ride and cross the harbor to explore this fascinating neighborhood. It's high foot traffic. This tourist area is packed with throngs of people at any time of the day. As one of the busiest neighborhoods in Kowloon, Sim Sha Shui has an abundance of shops, malls, restaurants, and bars. Once you've prepared yourself to brave the crowds, it's hard not to fall in love with this diverse neighborhood. Local eateries and eclectic boutiques are tucked away in the back alleys of Carnivon Road, while luxury shopping malls and hotels are dotted along the bustling Canton Road and Salisbury Road. Just a short ferry ride from Hong Kong Island, Lama Island is one of the best weekend getaways for those looking for a change of pace. The third largest island in Hong Kong is known for its two main villages, Yung Shu Wan and Sok Ku Wan. The former features quirky cafes and indie boutiques, 
while the latter is home to a fishing village lined with authentic seafood restaurants, with the two connected by scenic hiking trails and beaches with plenty of hidden gems to explore. Thanks for watching. Please do not forget to subscribe, like and share our videos.